Every time I fly towards Estero Bay, I am struck by how densely packed it is south of the bay. Houses, businesses, marinas, condominium towers, restaurants, all crammed together right up to the water's edge. Not surprising, folks do move to Florida to be on or near the water. And then you arrive at Estero Bay, a broad, shallow, 15 square mile expanse of water dotted with islands, oyster bars, and seagrass meadows, a place where the Paleo Indians and the Clusa thrived on the bounty of shellfish in a pristine estuary. Today, the watershed has shrunk to 360 square miles, and the hydrology has been fundamentally altered by human development. But sea life, birds, and other native animals still seek its refuge. If it hadn't been for a few forward-looking pioneers and grassroots activists fighting to have Estero Bay designated for this first state aquatic preserve back in 1966, the bay might look like what we just flew over. As a state aquatic preserve, Estero Bay is automatically considered an outstanding Florida water, deemed worthy of special protection because of its rare natural attributes. The special designation is intended to add a higher level of protection for maintaining good water quality. But Estero Bay is not a standalone body of water, it's an estuary. In fact, Estero means estuary, and it's fed by a number of rivers and creeks, all flowing off the mainland into the bay. They include Henry Creek, Mulock Creek, Mud Creek, the Estero River, Halfway Creek, Spring Creek, Leitner Creek, Oak Creek, and the Imperial River. Because the bay's protected status did not guarantee these tributaries the same level of regulatory oversight, a group of stakeholders, environmental groups, and business leaders came together to recommend the Estero Bay tributaries be added as outstanding Florida waters. In 1990, 30 years ago, Florida's Environmental Regulation Commission adopted the Estero Bay tributaries by rule as outstanding Florida waters. Back in 1966, the battle was against aggressive developers. Today, the landscape is a stark contrast to the pre-developed era, and our challenges are much more diverse and insidious. Driven by overpopulation and climate change, the quality of the water in those rivers and creeks is declining at an alarming rate with most now impaired for bacterial contamination and or nutrient pollution. The question on this 30th anniversary is what are we doing and what can we all do to staunch the decline? So come with us as we patrol the tributaries, explore why they are under assault, and meet some of the fine folks dedicated to restoring these precious waterways. Thank you.